the bail, bail, uh, bail going on right now. This is for the current and former city officials. Let's go ahead and listen in as those bail officials appear in court this afternoon. Thank you. But if, Cole, is anyone here on As to Ms. Cole, I don't believe so. As defendant, Mr. Rizzo. Good afternoon, Your Honor. James Burgess for Mr. Rizzo. Thank you. For defendant Spasia. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Russell Petty representing Ms. Spasia, who is also president of the Thank you. Is Mr. Artiga before the court? I don't believe so. As to Mr. Hernandez. Okay. That's right. Mr. Hernandez is on both cases. Thank you. Uh, I was assigned this case at noon. Uh, and I'm sorry that people had to keep waiting in the hallway uh, while this case worked its way from uh, Department 30. Uh, first thing, so that I am clear, uh, I understand that as to a defendant Cole, the 1275.1 was lifted? That's correct, Your Honor. As to defendant Cole and as to the defendant Artiga, as we made the record in the Department 30, uh, they presented sufficient proof of uh, the source of bail for both the bond and the premium, and as a consequence, we requested that the uh, hold be lifted, and I believe that should have been the order. And, and I was now uh, the, the hold was also lifted as to Ms. Yokopo, correct? That, that's correct, Your Honor. And there's no controversy in the bail amount. We are we've actually asked the matter to be taken off calendar. All right. Uh, my understanding is there's a bonds person ready to post a bond. That's correct. Does, do I have any role in this? No, you don't. Well, that's that's encouraging. <laughs> uh, all right. As to Ms. Yokopo, that matter is for the court. But as to the other defendants, uh, uh, would, would, I'm sorry, would, would we then um, be free to uh, be excused from the matter? Yes, as, as and uh, is that okay with people? Perfectly fine. As to uh, Ms. Yacopo, uh, the 1275.1 hold having been lifted, Ms. Yacopo, uh, as a condition of any posted bond in this case, is ordered to appear for arraignment in Department 30 at 8.30 a.m. on October 21st, 2010. Is that acknowledged, Ms. Yacopo? Yes, sir. Thank you. So arrangements can be made uh, to process uh, Ms. Yokopo in accordance with the orders of Department 30 and, and Judge Merritt. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Counsel. Counsel is excused on that. With regard to uh, the other defendants uh, presently before the court, <clears throat> there is a Penal Code Section 1275.1 declaration filed by the people as to each one of those defendants. I don't uh, have any uh, contrary. Uh, declaration or information uh, by the other defendants, but I'll ask in a few moments. There is pending before the court a motion uh, filed uh, by Mr. Spertus as to defendant Rizzo for reduction of bail, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Counsel, do you have a preference as to what I do first? My preference, Your Honor, so that we can, I think, in the most efficient way is to determine, ask the court to determine what the appropriate bail would be, and then once that number is set, uh, talk about what the sources of bail are. And the reason that I ask you to do that, Your Honor, is because with regard to some of the defendants, there have been some proffers of a certain dollar value that would be wholly acceptable. In other words, if the court were to set bail at $100,000 for some defendants, that may be an amount that they can post uh, based on the collateral that we've reviewed. But if it were to be set above that, then they would not be able to post bail. So it seems to me that the most efficient way to address this is to set the dollar value and then determine the source. Do defense counsel have any contrary position? Well, we agree, Your Honor, we concur. Does that speak to all defense counsel? Well, Your Honor, if I may be very briefly heard on behalf of Mr. Mirabal, during the lunch hour, we conferred and decided to withdraw our request to be heard on the amount of bail. Okay. So we ask that that be taken on. All right, so, and there's no uh, 1275 issue as to the source of bail. We're not going to be arguing. All right, do the people have any objection then to the, the fact that the counsel for Mr. Maribal is withdrawing any uh, bail reduction uh, motion? Certainly not. All right, as to Mr. Maribal, the matter is off calendar, at least in this court, and Mr. Maribal uh, is remanded in lieu of bail, which I believe now is set at 260000 Correct. $260,000. Mr. Maribal is ordered to appear for his arraignment. That'll be in Department 30 of this court on the 24th of October 2010 at 8.30 a.m. Mr. Mirabal, do you acknowledge that? Yes, I do. All right, thank you. May counsel be excused then on that? If you want to. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. So, should we turn our attention first to uh, Mr. Hernandez, who is defendant number one in the case ending 025? Yes, sir. Yes. 
That's fine, Your Honor. If I may, I'd like to make a broad statement so I don't have to make it repeatedly. With regard to the amounts of bail that we have requested, in this case, the bail schedule permits presumptive bail as to each of the counts, plus where there's a 1202.6 allegation, the amount of the taking. In this case, the amounts that you have before you do not include the staff presumptive bail. We did so because we wanted to come to court with what we believe is a reasonable amount that ensures the public safety. And so each of the bail amounts that are requested are based strictly upon the amount of the taking and do not include the presumptive bail amounts. Had we included the presumptive bail amounts, the bail request for some of these defendants would be substantially increased. For Mr. Rizzo, for instance, it would be an additional $1.2 million. And I tell you that only because the amount of money that we walked in here asking for is what we genuinely believe is the amount that would be required to ensure public safety and no more. All right, so I'll consider your having made that representation with regard to all of the defendants. Do you want to be heard specifically as to Mr. Hernandez and the other defendants, or is it just that general amount? I believe that the general amounts that are set forth, Your Honor, we believe are reasonable. I prefer to keep my responses until after the court is able to hear what the defense position is regarding why that amount is unreasonable, unless the court would prefer for me. The argument as to each of these defendants is largely the same, and I have no interest, and I'm sure the court has no interest in hearing the same argument. No, I mean, people have made the representation that the bail amount that was set and requested reflects an alleged taking. Yes, and it's important to note, Your Honor, that the alleged taking in these counts, each and every one of them has to do with public money and a violation of the public trust. And there's been some discussion about the fact that this may or may not be a white-collar case, and our position is, regardless of whether you call it a white-collar case or a paper case or just a money case, the violation of public trust in this case cannot be understated. And the real question, I think, that faces us is, do the citizens of Bell feel safe? We don't view the articulation in the code with regard to public safety to say only free from physical threat, but we believe that the actions that have occurred over a prolonged period of time in complete derivation of the trust that these defendants asked the public for does, in fact, pose a risk to the safety of the public at large. These charges are not just one occurrence or an occasional occurrence. They are behavior over an extended period of time and are articulated, I think, amply by the kinds of charges. So I'd ask the court to consider the level of threat to the public, not just from the standpoint of what we traditionally look at in terms of physical harm, but whether or not the citizens of Bell and surrounding communities really feel safe, because I submit that these kinds of crimes go to the very heart of what it is that we come to trust when we expect government to do what it's supposed to do. Thank you. As to Mr. Hernandez? Yes, in the order of argument, may the court allow Mr. Rizzo, who is defendant number one in the 2-6 case, to go first? I don't have any objection. The reason I called the 0-2-5 case first is because of the earlier case. It doesn't reflect anything in terms of my preference. So that being a request, it's granted. Mr. Spertus, you may address Mr. Rizzo. Yes, and Your Honor, the court had an opportunity to review the motion. I did. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor, thank you. And Your Honor, speaking directly to the district attorney's comments just now about danger to the community, that is the core issue for this bail proceeding. What amount of bail is necessary to protect the community and deter Mr. Rizzo from fleeing his next appearance? And there are separate analyses, but there is no allegation whatsoever in the people's complaint or any of the proffers made that Mr. Rizzo poses a danger to the community. There is no allegation of violence, no allegation of drugs, no allegations of firearm use. And what really I just heard from the district attorney would be a very compelling closing argument after trial, but this is a bail hearing, and the type of 
danger that's contemplated by the bail statutes is physical violence. Mr. Rizzo is no longer allowed access to his 